Peter, are you home? Yes, at home. I need you to help me. Help me with not make water. Wait. <laughs> I need to work here. <laughs> work what? I need to put on my booster plug, darling. Okay. Okay. You gonna help me? Help what? You have to help me. Help where I better go. So I show you, don't worry. Now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my assistant's here. <laughs> um, yeah, so like this is the thing, it's not a power commander, it's like it's an alternative to the power commander. It's called a booster plug. What it does, it um, regulates the, um, the air fuel mixture by telling the, the computer system that the temperature is actually about 20 degrees lower. So it actually makes the, um, the fuel more richer. Right, and so we're going to put this in today. Uh, now I've watched a couple of videos, but I'm also going to do a video for us doing it um, because I don't have anywhere near the luxuries of these people in the garage. <laughs> I've got the outside of the house. Um, I probably could take it down the road and get one of the guys to do it, but uh, then he's just going to have as much trouble as, as what I am. Uh, I need an assistant here to hold the tank while I actually fit the plug in. Anyway, we'll try to do little bits of video as we do this and get it going, okay? Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this little Allen key out of here. I think there's another one in the toolbox. I'm going to take the back seat off and this seat off here so I can get to the bolts in the tank. Okay, so we've taken the pinion seat off and the main seat off. This is one of the bolts we've got to take off, but uh, to get to the um, the, the other bolts I've got to take off the front piece here and from what I've seen in the videos I've also got to take off these tied plastic pieces as well they basically slip off from the back okay so we've taken the sides off and now we've exposed the three bolts there's one two and three bolts here um, that's actually holds the tank on and that's when I need Shania's help because there are pipes underneath here um, and some extra extra cabling that attached to the tank and we don't really want to remove all that so uh, uh, she's going to hold the tank still right supported <laughs> while I actually do the actual fitting which is just underneath in here I come on. okay you feel strong now not too heavy don't worry I feel strong you sure yeah okay open up a little bit up more he left for more here okay a little bit more See, what we've got to get to is here, right, so she's going to just support that while I loosen this thing here off and put the booster plug in. You can actually get to the uh, connecting in here, but uh, uh, well, we're just going to just play around with it a little bit, okay? So we've just loosened that bracket off. What I've got to do is undo this thing here, and the booster plug basically fits in between that line there. So what we've got to do now is the fact that where it's positioned, there's the little computer chip that's sort of sitting there. I've got to get that up inside the tank area. Uh, there's no need to actually fix it anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. But this little device here, this is the actual temperature sensor. They say this needs to be sort of put somewhere away from the direct heat of the motor. There is a sort of a, a position up here near the yoke where the fuel line, where the um, brake lines go through. So I'm going to sort of attempt to sort of fit it inside there and see if that works. Um, yeah, so of course I can't do it. I need an extra spare set of hands for the camera, but let's not worry about that. Thank you, darling, for helping me. It's okay now. You have me too much myself. It's okay. Oh my God. <laughs> I know what to lady look like. I'm so you, to, so you're oh, not hairdresser. Oh, yeah. You. Oh, look number like number one, or... number one choice for hairdresser. Number two choice, you can be mechanic now. No, okay? no, no. I don't want to. My body look like a boy. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I want the cylinder. All right. Anyway, so it's back on now. I'm just going to do all the bolting up again, and away we go. Really straightforward little thing to do. Now I could have been doing the air filter as well. Bob says change the air filter, but like, the thing is not hasn't done 1500 kilometres. I don't want to waste money on another air filter. It's a fairly straightforward job getting in and out, as long as you've got an assistant. So we'll worry about that next time. And there we go, the uh, trim is now all on. And the side panels there are on. All I've got to do now is whack the seat back on and uh, give it a try. 
well, the thing's fitted in. It's still going, so I'm quite happy with that part of it. Now it just takes some time for the thing to recalibrate with the whole air fuel mixture again as well. Um, so we still don't know about the engine light, the city engine light on, so but I haven't written it, written it anywhere. I think I'll just take it for a short run just around the, the local soy here and see how it feels. Recording! So it's not actually easy to tell, like I'm going to have to obviously start riding it, the motor really hot. Um, but what I have noticed is the fact that the popping's stopped on deceleration. I took it around the block before she did the filming and gave it a good blat out to about 8,000 RPM and uh, then full under full engine braking and there was no popping, um, which is one of the things that was concerning me. Now the only thing to do was, you know, like find out more about this engine light, why this engine light wants to, wants to stay on. It's uh, part of the ECU. The ECU shouldn't need any remapping. Um, you know, just for the, you know, the extra airflow, but the thing does smooth, feel a dance to a side smoother. So you know, Bob's recommendation there has really sort of made a bit of a, you know, a bit of an eye opener. Just something as simple as that, you know, like half an hour to, to fit it. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so a bit arrived today by a DHL from Denmark. Um, I was expecting to pay uh, import duties on it, but they just dropped it off at the, the door and got you know the mother signed for it. Uh, and I thought, I thought she paid for it, but she says no, there's no extra charges, so <laughs> you never know. Maybe because of the fact there was a tie here, they, they didn't, they, they, I don't know how it works. Um, you know, it's something from overseas, you'd expect, you know, some sort of taxes to be paid somewhere. Unless, of course, it's all prepaid. It does just say, you know, when I bought it, it was said, you know, including delivery, and they knew it was coming to Thailand, so maybe it's all covered in that sort of thing. I, I really don't know how it works. Um, yeah, but all in all, uh, you know, this is the next modification. Um, everything's now fitted. I think I mentioned the fact that we um, we put the uh, grill down here, so we've got the little shiny uh, stone chip, uh, stone protector uh, on the uh, on the uh, radiator. So that's all now done. Um, all in all, the whole thing looks pretty sexy. Uh, it's a pretty good looking bike now. Sounds pretty good. Uh, it's all done. I've been talking to Bob about sort of some extra cushioning here. He's actually having um, gel added to his seat um, to give him, you know, extra comfort. He says the gel gel underlay uh, just really cushions it out. One of the reasons being is the fact that because you're not actually taking any of your weight on your feet, uh, all the all your upper body weight is actually in your bum. Whereas you know when you normally ride a normal bike, uh, as you go over bumps, you know your legs tend to absorb a fair bit of bumping. Um, you know, naturally, it's just a natural um, tendency for the legs to do that. But when your legs are sort of, you know, sitting forward like they do on here, um, you do. You tend to tend to take a lot more weight on your bum. Um, so, you know, after a couple of hours, you know, your bum starts to get a bit on the sore side. Uh, in my case, the the coccyx, you know, the, the lower base of the spine, I had an injury when I was 15. So, um, it's never really recovered, or has recovered, but. You know, I'm getting a bit older now, so it's starting to come back and bite me as well. 
Um, but all in all, it's uh, it's all done. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of photos again, and um, we'll talk to you in a second. Well, there we go. It's all done. I'm just going to put the bike away in a second. Um, now, I managed to do that with all the tools that they supplied with the bike, except I did need to use a screwdriver. Uh, there's no screwdriver actually in the toolkit. Um, so if you're going to be doing this yourself, you're going to make sure you get a Phillips head screwdriver just to loosen that bracket off underneath the seat. Um, but other than that, it's all pretty good. So we're all done here, and we'll say goodbye to my assistant. She will say goodbye now. Bye bye. Have to end time for CVDR. Yeah, <laughs> just a short one today. Anyway, we'll talk to you later, guys. Peace out. Bye.